um so about spirituality again what are like three profound spiritual experiences that you yourself have had because if someone's thinking about a spiritual journey like meditation like you know encountering say ghosts or mm-hmm. you know even that's an aspect of spirituality mm-hmm. have you had any larger than life experiences in your own life i don't think i count on those to be very honest to me spirituality is about how it transforms my living your daily life my daily life mm. my perspectives my world views my outlook towards mm. relationships mm. you know my outlook towards the work i do mm. you know how does it transform that mm. that experience is more to me than some super supernatural natural or some occult kind of experiences mm. uh, not to say that you don't have them but i don't count on them too much got it for me spirituality is a life transforming journey mm. than some occult and supernatural experiences got it so uh, so so like when someone's talking to you um personally and this is because i'm a podcaster my job is to dive deep into people's minds sure i just feel like you have too much perspective and i am dead sure that that's a result of a lot of reading mm-hmm. i'm sure you've had spiritual learnings at the sure. monastery sure. but i'm dead sure that a lot of those perspectives have come straight out of yeah. not just holy books but all kinds sure. of books but in saying that let's talk about holy books have you read the bhagavad gita yes okay of course and so- um so like could you break down the bhagavad gita for the youth like mm-hmm. what's in that book why mm-hmm. do people say that you open any page of it and you'll get your answer why do sure. people say things like that sure sure i think the first thing to know is let's let's remove the religion aspect from the bhagavad gita totally mm. bhagavad gita is not a religious book mm. it is a book which uh, gives you the way to live mm. right mm. and the setting for the bhagavad gita is the battlefield of kurukshetra the mahabharat where Arjun's confused mm. right mm. and Krishna becomes his mentor mm. and gives him guidance mm. in a way that he can now start doing what is meant to do right yeah. so every young man or lady is going to have confusions every young person is going to have those dilemmas right? to do or not to do to be or not to be that's exactly how the gita begins mm. it begins with confusion it begins with dilemmas it begins with um uh, a lack of meaning mm. right and then uh, krishna kind of guides arjun through and empowers arjun to make his own choices mm. krishna only acts as a facilitator mm. right and empowers arjun to understand that he is way too more powerful than the people is going to face in the battle it's mm. something like the lion king mm. right in the lion king you have simba Mm. But Simba in in company with Timon and who's the other fellow? Timon and Pumba. Ha, uh, Pumba and Timon. Yeah. You know, kind of starts identifying himself to be like one of them. Mm. And then you have uh, this Rafiki. Rafiki. That's right, Rafiki, coming to remind him and calls for his father. Mm. You know, and his father comes and tells him that you are way more powerful than Scar. Mm. Correct. Mm. So we need. every young man and lady needs to understand that they are way more powerful than what they are going through at the moment mm. their confusions are smaller than them mm. their challenges are smaller than them mm. their problems are smaller than them their heartbreaks as painful as they are but are still smaller than them and they have the capacity to overcome them those mm. pains that they're going through so i think that's precisely where books like the gita mm. help a lot mm. because they build in you that sense of confidence and strength and strength fortitude that i have the power mm. as a spiritual being mm. to overcome everything that's going around going on in my life mm. and i have the power to be able to make the difference mm. and that impact God. because i am a spiritual being God. can you God. can you reference like three big lessons from the bhagavad gita that mm-hmm. stayed with you specifically yes. uh one of the lessons that stayed with me from the gita is a particular text from the second chapter of the gita which talks about uh, the summer and the winter season right and this particular text says that the summer and the winter season keeps coming and going every year mm. seasons change mm. and just because the seasons change we never stop performing our duties right uh let's say for example it's chicago and the temperatures are minus 27 degrees celsius 
people don't stop their work still. Let's say it's Delhi, it's 43 degrees Celsius. People are still on and going on with their regular life with a few adjustments here and there, obviously. So this text of the Gita, chapter 2, tells us that we have to learn to tolerate the ups and downs and not be distracted from what our main purpose is. So that's something that stayed with me a lot. Tolerate what you're going through. And tolerance means, like when we talk about tolerating uh, failures and pains, we can understand. But we also have to learn to tolerate our success mm. and the good times. Mm. Because both distract us. Mm. You know, usually we only look at the negatives as distractions. But even the positives distract us from what we are meant to be doing. So that's something that uh, really kind of uh, stayed with me. The second thing that I uh, really kind of resonate with, with in the Gita is a verse from the sixth chapter which talks about the mind being a friend or an enemy mm. to you. Mm. It depends on how you deal with the mind. Okay. Right? If you befriend your mind, the mind will become you, become your friend and will empower you to do what you want to do. Mm. But if you don't deal with it rightly, then the mind will become your enemy and will lead to your downfall. Mm. Uh, I'll give you an example, very relevant to the youth. Right? Uh, for example, uh, you want to get up early in the morning to go for a jog or for a workout because you know you want to be fit. You know your days are busy. And you decide, this is going to be my uh, plan for the year 2020, mm. correct? You set up the alarm clock to wake up early in the morning, like 5, 6, whatever. And when the alarm goes, what's the mind saying? The first thing, you slept last, late last night, take it easy. Or uh, maybe we can do it beginning tomorrow. Or maybe this is not the right thing for you to do. The mind's constantly playing games, right? Mm. Now, if you have a mind which is constantly giving these kind of reasons, mm. you're not going to wake up. Right? On the other hand, if you learn to train your mind using the proper intellectual process, right, proper spiritual process, your mind can be your greatest asset and your friend. Which is meditation, good books. Meditation, books. Right? Correct friends. Correct friends, the right kind of company. All of these are inputs mm. so that your mind kind of becomes a friend. So mm. that's the second thing that uh, really kind of uh, resonates with me. And the third thing from the Gita that connects to me a lot is how do we start looking at the presence of divinity everywhere in every aspect? We don't have to necessarily go to a place of worship mm. to look at the presence of divinity. Mm. You can look at the presence of divinity in nature. You can look at the presence of divinity in other people. You mm. can start looking at the splendor of the creator or the creation. Mm. Or you can start looking at the splendor of the creator in the creation, mm -hmm. you know, which is precisely why this is something uh, not as easy, but something that I usually tell people is when you look at somebody who's better than you, you know, and especially if they are in the same field, usually there is insecurity. Mm. There's insecurity that he's this guy's doing better than me in what I am doing. Or there is envy, jealousy. Uh, sometimes it goes to the extent of sabotaging that other person's work as well, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. And it has happened in the world. It happens all the time. So when you start looking at divinity in creation, you start looking at how divinity has empowered somebody to do something in a special way. That person has been gifted by higher powers, right? And to sabotage that person's work or to be envious about that person or to be, feel insecure means actually insulting somebody who's given that gift to him, mm. you know. 100%. But if I look at that person and derive inspiration from that person, I can seek that inspiration to follow my aspiration, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that aspect of the Gita also kind of really resonates with me that you start looking at divinity everywhere uh, and in every place around you, including people who are doing better because it's not them. You can see straight away. Very often I see people who do remarkable stuff and they usually, when they speak, they say it's they doing it. And of course they're doing it. No doubt that there's a part of part that they're doing. But you can tell that they are, there's something beyond them that's kind of making them do it. Whether it's acting, speaking, singing, something. There's an element which is not necessarily effort. Mm, not their effort. You know? X, X factor. 
X factor. Mm. And when you start appreciating that X factor as divinity, mm. oh, that's something that really kind of connects to me as well. My absolute favorite verse from the Bible is Philippians 4.13. I've mm-hmm. actually got a tattoo really? uh, about Philippians wow. 4.13. <laughs> and the verse says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Yeah. So it sure. kind of resonates with that same Absolutely. idea that any kind of creative process yeah. is not entirely yours. Sure. You, you are just a channel. Sure. 